In this video, we will look at cardiovascular diseases and we'll break them down into categories. So the first and the most common um, is the cardi uh, coronary artery disease, also known as ischemic, uh, ischemic heart disease. And it is where we have poor blood flow to the heart. And here we have the heart, and the heart is supplied by the blood uh, by vessels called the coronary arteries. But if we have a plaque as a result of atherosclerosis, for example, we have decreased blood flow to the heart tissues. And if we get no blood, no blood flow, um, it can lead to acute myocardial infarction. Um, and this is where we have necrosis of the myocardial tissue caused by lack of oxygenation and blood flow. And, uh, and as I mentioned, acute myocardial infarction is a result of uh, an occluded coronary artery. So coronary artery disease is associated with angina, which occurs when there is a temporary loss of blood supply to the heart, and this causes chest pain. There are two types of angina, stable angina and unstable angina. Stable angina is where we have a stable plaque, and chest pain comes about upon exertion, so exercising. Then there is unstable angina, which is a result, which is a result of a hemodynamically unstable plaque, and we have thrombosis involved. A heart attack occurs when the heart blood vessel is suddenly blocked, and this is life-threatening and leads to myocardial infarction, as mentioned. The next type of cardiovascular disease we will look at is heart failure. Now, heart failure can result from many heart uh, and body conditions, disorders, such as coronary heart disease, hypertension, cardiomyopathies, and vasculitis, amongst many other things. Heart failure is where the heart is basically unable to maintain a strong blood flow um, and pump it to the body, around the body. And this, is re and this results in chronic tiredness, reduced physical activity, and shortness of breath. So here we have the heart, and it's four chambers, and here we have the inferior vena cava, which connects with the liver via the hepatic vein, and the liver, coming out of the liver from the bottom, we have the portal vein. Heart failure can be divided into three types, right-sided heart failure, left-sided heart failure, and congestive heart failure. Right-sided heart failure is usually a result of left-sided heart failure. In right-sided heart failure, so we're talking about the right atrium and right ventricle, blood can back up into other tissues, such as the liver and the abdomen, causing congestion in these areas. So uh, as a result of right-sided heart failure, we can have hepatomegaly and ascites, as, um, because of the backflow from the right ventricle and right atrium because the right side of the heart fails to pump blood out, to pump blood in the right direction. Now, in left-sided heart failure, oxygenated blood, because on the left side we have the left ventricle and left atrium, which contains the oxygenated blood from the lungs. So in left-sided heart failure, oxygenated blood cannot be pumped out from the heart to the rest of the body. And so blood can backflow and accumulate in the lung, in the lungs of the veins, in the lung vein, pulmonary veins essentially, causing fluid accumulation in the lungs, leading to shortness of breath and pulmonary edema. The third type of heart failure is congestive heart failure, which involves both right and left-sided heart failures, leading to congestion in the lungs, pulmonary edema, and congestion of the liver and abdominal area. We have a decreased cardiac output, like in all heart failures, which leads to decrease in venous return to the heart, which results in decreased in stroke volume and cardiac output again. The cycle continues if the, the underlying problem is not solved. The next uh, cardiovascular disease um, is cardiomyopathies. Now, cardiomyopathies involve the muscles of the heart, hence cardio, heart, myo, muscle, pathies, um, abnormality. So cardiomyopathies um, is where the heart muscles become enlarged, 
thickened or stiff, reducing the effectiveness of the heart, leading to heart failure. There are three main types of cardiomyopathies. Dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Let's look at dilated first. Dilated cardiomyopathy is when there is less blood pumped from the heart because ventricles are enlarged and weakened. And the dilated cardiomyopathy can lead to systolic heart failure uh, with a big decrease in ejection fraction. Um, so we have enlarged ventricles um, with uh, yeah, dilation. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, on the, the other hand, is when, less, when there's less blood pumped from the heart because the ventricles can't fully relax. So it's a problem in diastole, and thus hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can lead to diastolic heart failure. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we have a thick ventricle, super thick, and the ventricles, the muscles of the ventricles are super thick, and the ventricular septum is also thick thus restricting proper filling of the ventricles with blood. Restrictive cardiomyopathy is when the left ventricle maintains normal dimensions, but uh, we develop left atrial hypertrophy and dilation and right ventricular hypertrophy as a result. So here we have hypertrophy and dilation of the left atria and hypertrophy of the, left vent uh, of the right ventricle as a result because of the backflow uh, from, the, from the left side of the heart to the right. The next cardiovascular disease involves the aorta. So we are going to classify this as aortic disease. An example is when we have an, ab um, an abnormal widening of the aorta, as in aortic aneurysm, specifically abdominal aortic aneurysm. So if we look at this aortic aneurysm here, it results in a weakened aortic wall and plaque formation. And this aortic aneurysm can result uh, in uh, thrombosis and then embolist, which can, you know, lodge into vessels leading to some very bad problems downstream. Another aortic disease is aortic dissection, um, when blood will fill the walls of the aorta vessel. So this is due to some disruption or abnormality in the um, aortic vessel wall and allowing blood to accumulate between the tun tunical layers um, of the aorta. Peripheral vascular disease, also known as peripheral arterial disease, <clears throat> is another uh, cardiovascular uh, dis disease. So here we have the heart with a descending aorta. Peripheral vascular disease is basically a result of plaque formation in the peripheral vasculature um, from atherosclerosis, for example. So obstruction of large arteries that supply blood to the peripheries. And this can have, um, uh, this can lead to devastating con like big problems such as um, if we have uh, renal stenosis, for example. Uh, another cardiovascular disease is a category is valvulitis, or more specifically, inflammation of the valves, or more specifically, valvular disease of the heart. So inflammation of the valve, the most common cause is rheumatic heart disease. Let's focus on rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic heart disease is where there is permanent damage to the heart muscle, mainly the valves, caused by rheumatic fever. So if we look at rheumatic fever and how it comes about, well, a bacteria called, uh, called group A strep, which are basically your streptococcus pyogenes, can cause pharyngitis in the throat, which then can cause rheumatic fever, which then can lead to rheumatic heart disease or group A streptococcus can lead straight to rheumatic fever as a result of uh, local skin infection, for example. Other valvular disease, which do not always involve inflammation of the valves, include aortic stenosis 
aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, and mitral regurgitation. The next uh, cardiovascular disease um, is pericarditis, which is inflammation of the pericardium. The pericardium is a fibrous and serous layer protecting the heart. We will look at how the pericardium looks like inflamed and how it looks like normally uh, using a diagrammatic representation. So when, it, when the pericardium is normal, this is what it looks like. You have the outer fibrous pericardium, the parietal layer, the parietal layer, and then we have the visceral pericardium, which directly surrounds the heart. In between the parietal and visceral layer of the pericardium is the pericardial cavity, which is a cavity that contains pericardial fluid that serves to reduce friction between the pericardium. In an inflamed pericardium, we have disruption of the pericardial layers, inflammation, with thickening and damage to the pericardium, resulting in friction of the pericardial uh, layers and pain. So the pericardium rub against each other as the heart contracts and relaxes. Um, other pericardial diseases are pericardial effusion, which can lead to uh, tamponade, and hemopericardium, which is very, uh, which is life-threatening. The last cardiovascular disease we will look at is the congenital heart diseases, which are disorders of the heart or the central blood vessels that is present at birth. The congenital um, heart diseases are actually the leading cause of death in the first year of life. We will look at five main ones. Patent foramen ovale is where the foramen ovale does not close, resulting in a left to right shunt. Patent ductus arteriosus is where the ductus arteriosus does not close, cause it, resulting in a left to right shunt as well between the aorta and pulmonary artery. Coarctation of the aorta is another uh, congenital heart disease. Transposition of the great vessels is where both the foramen ovale and patent ductus uh, do not close. And the final um, congenital heart disease we will mention is uh, tetralogy of fallow, which is composed, which is composed of four tetra um, uh, things. Uh, these are the right ventricular hypertrophy, um, the ventricular septal defect, pulmonary stenosis, and the overriding aorta. So all these four represent a uh, tetralogy of fallow. I hope you enjoyed this video on the main cardiovascular diseases. Um, hopefully there'll be some links that will go into more detail into each of these conditions. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.